So, what is that weird shaped building on Chester Road as you pass through Stretford? Well, it's had several names over its lifetime, but this began life as the Longford Super Cinema. It seems that it's a bit like Marmite for the locals, with many crying out for it to be saved, and others feeling it's an eyesore that should have been demolished years ago. People old enough to remember it in its heyday call it the finest cinema ever built. I would show you around, but this is just a big TV screen, and no member of the public has been inside for 25 years. So how about a history lesson instead? On the 14th of August 1936, the land where the building now stands was transferred to Jackson and Newport Limited, with construction said to have begun the year previous. Seen here is a sign advertising the new Super Cinema, which was under construction at the time. The sign read, Longford Super Cinema and Cafe, Roberts, Wood and Elder. Now, Henry F. Elder was the architect who designed the Longford when aged just 25. He was born in Pendleton in 1909 and spent his later years living and lecturing in Canada. In 1935, he joined forces with Aguilim Caradoc Roberts, and they have an impressive list of buildings to their credit. These include several cinemas and theatres around Manchester, and a number in Glasgow too. Interestingly, they also proposed designs for a large 2,000-seat egg-shaped cinema to be built in the centre of Manchester. It would have been constructed in reinforced concrete with the screen in the pointed end of the egg, which would have been supported on stilts. But sadly, World War II killed the scheme. But seriously though, could you imagine a massive egg in the centre of Manchester? Well, I think it's an excellent idea. Anyway, back to the Longford. It was funded by Jackson and Newport, who also owned the Pictodrome on the opposite corner of Chester Road. A cinema was really taken off by this time, they had planned to increase capacity at the Pictodrome by adding an extra balcony, but they found this wasn't possible, so they decided to build a new super cinema instead. Henry Elder was commissioned to design everything from the building itself to the interior concealed neon tube lighting. It was the first building in the country to have this. He also designed the carpets and even the uniforms of the cinema ushers. Every little detail was thought about. In the stalls lounge it said, Here one treads a carpet of green, designed specially by the architect, and arrives under a quaintly star-spangled ceiling of blue, two storeys high. The circle lounge was large, green carpeted, gold ceilinged, a room of softly diffused light and comfortable settees. The place was obviously so much more than the multiplexes that we're used to these days. The front of the building originally had a large forecourt leading to the main entrance. This was sadly demolished in the 1970s to make way for the widening of Chester Road. The main front of the building was cladded in faience, which is a ceramic glazed terracotta and it would have looked quite spectacular. Here we can see a glimpse into the past, as the original tiling still hides behind the modern. Also seen here are the remains of the original marble floor, which still lies intact. The main façade, which is probably the building's most recognisable feature, was shaped to resemble an old-fashioned cash register to represent the money aspect of the film industry. To the side of the building on Edge Lane is another entrance, this time representing the sex aspect of the industry, with not so subtle imagery. Also on Edge Lane are these Art Deco style masonettes built to house the cinema workers. They're still occupied to this day with retail units below. They also hide the not so attractive auditorium exterior of the Longford. Although in keeping with the style of the Longford, details as to who built the masonettes are scarce. Once inside the building there was a foyer of Venetian marble like we just saw still remains. Just above there was the cafe which could seat almost 150 diners. Here you can see some of what you could enjoy there. The special lunch sounds good to me. 
The National Heritage Report on the building states that foyer murals depicting contemporary cinema scenes are thought to survive behind removable coverings, and that even though the interior stalls area was altered to form a bingo hall, little of the plan was disturbed, with the circle, projection room, upper floor bar, lighting rotunda, as well as the cafe area above the foyer all still intact. The auditorium itself is big, seating 1,400 in the stalls and 600 in the circle. That's almost as much as the Manchester Apollo. It's decorated in tangerine and silver blue art deco designs. There was under seat heating and large double seats at the back row where I suspect many first dates took place. It also featured soundproofing as well as air conditioning. Certainly luxurious. The screen in the auditorium also had the ability to slide sideways to make way for a stage, enabling the building to host theatre shows once a week and even concerts. On the upper level was a bar which was known as the Circle Bar during its later years. The first film shown at Longford was Tudor Rose, starring Nova Pilbeam, with tickets priced at sixpence for the stalls and three shillings for the circle. In 1938, the audience cheered as the newsreel of Neville Chamberlain was screened, where he declared peace in our time, which sadly didn't last. When the Free Trade Hall in Manchester was bombed during World War II, the Longford briefly became home to the Halle Orchestra, who performed there despite the ongoing war. In another anecdote I found, it is said that during a night of bombing, a local man by the name of John Comer took to the stage to entertain the crowd who were not allowed to leave the building due to the bombs falling outside. He later became an actor, appearing in Last of the Summer Wine. In 1950, the Longford was bought and renamed by the Asoldo Group and enjoyed another 15 years as a cinema until the last picture was unceremoniously shown, apparently one of the Quartermass films. TVs were becoming more commonplace in the home and cinema goers dwindled away. Bingo was fast becoming a more popular pastime and like so many of these old cinemas, Ladbrokes bought what was now called the Osoldo and turned it into a bingo hall almost overnight. As I mentioned earlier, in 1979 the widening of Chester Road then meant it lost its grand concourse. In 1986 it became a top rank club where punters could drink cheap beer, play fruit machines and have a game of bingo. But that wasn't to last either. Eventually even the bingo punters were in decline and it closed to the public for good in 1995. Thankfully the year previous it was grade 2 listed by English Heritage, therefore at least making any threat of demolition less likely. And so we enter the wilderness years. The building was bought by a local businessman in around 1997 and from shortly thereafter telecoms installations have been a permanent fixture to the exterior. In 2003, listed building consent was given for extensions, as well as external and internal alterations, to convert the building to a theatre slash leisure arts facility. But nothing happened. The building remained empty and began to fall into disrepair, a shadow of its former self. Its grand facade crumbling, shown here in 2007. Throughout 2010 and 2011, work was slowly carried out to the front of the building, fixing the crumbling brickwork but cementing over the tiled facade. But it did look much more loved than before, and locals had hoped something was finally happening. In 2011, there were rumours it was going to open up as a skating rink, but still nothing. A rare statement from the owner then came, reading, There have been rumours that it's going to be demolished or turned into flats, all sorts of things, he says. It's still destined to be a family entertainment centre, that was the idea and that's what we want to follow through with. We're looking at a couple of groups, both theatre groups, to use the building. Regarding the concerns that the building is looking shabby, he said, Don't be confused by what you see outside. The auditorium has had a complete repaint and is looking very nice. But still, nothing. Then towards the middle of the 2010s came the Stratford Master Plan and plans for the building to be brought back into use, possibly by a compulsory purchase order were made. The Master Plan read, The Grade 2 listed Asoldo Cinema has been vacant since 1995. Repairs have recently been made to the external fabric of the building. The restoration of the Grade 2 listed Asoldo Cinema building would provide the opportunity for a large-scale family-friendly entertainment facility within Stratford Town Centre. This would support the development of the evening economy and also encourage families to use the town centre for leisure uses. Under the preferred option, restaurants slash cafe bar facilities would be provided as part of the Asoldo site. Works to the rear of the site would improve access to the Bridgewater Canal and take advantage of proximity to this key asset. But, you guessed it, still, nothing.
And so we get to the present. Listed building consent was recently granted for the installation of an electric heater delivering warm air to the main auditorium. The plans don't mention why the heating is required, but do note that the building is planned to be used for occasional artistic roller dance. Plans also show indications of a new maple hardwood floor being installed, improved disabled access including a new ramp as well as steps and a proposed new door into the auditorium. As well as these, on the plans there is a room labelled Proposed Scenery Room, as well as a proposed extension beyond this. Who knows what all this could mean? It's just speculation for now, and nobody except the owners and the people carrying out work for them know for sure. Not a single picture of inside the building seemed to exist from recent years. Believe me, people have searched. But then, after digging around long enough, I came across this. This appears to have been taken as recently as 2019 and seems to be from the rear of the auditorium looking out towards the north facing fire exit. You can see the edges of the circle just above and the Art Deco tiling looks to be in good condition. The hardwood floor also appears to be in place. These pictures from earlier this year appear to show activity going on inside with windows that are normally boarded up now in view and they look to have been a recent addition. Passers-by have also noted activity appearing to take place inside as recently as March, but as always it's a mystery what is actually happening in there. For this video I spoke to local councillor Stephen Adshead, who's told me that the council's recent plans included a public event to consult locals on the building. This is now on hold because of the lockdown. Their aim is to work with local communities and listen to any ideas. Once lockdown is over this will happen. He also added that a compulsory purchase order is not ruled out at this point. I'm sure you'll agree that we don't ever want to see this happen to such a unique piece of architecture that didn't just only survive the war and a complete town centre remodelling but is also now over 80 years old and still standing proud on Chester Road just waiting for its encore. The building is privately owned, I get that, but it was a building built for the community and it lies empty when it has so much potential. It should be something every Stratfordian is proud of seeing in their town, not an oddity that's fallen into obscurity. So, there we are. The best outcome in my opinion at this point could be something like what's happened with the plaza in Stockport, a building of a similar age with a similar story but more fortunate in that it underwent a multi-million pound restoration funded in part by a national lottery grant. It's now a cinema and theatre showing classic films and staging live shows and with Stretford Town Centre currently undergoing a transformation of its own with new bars and restaurants opening up, something like what they've done with the plaza would be a welcome addition, but only time will tell, or maybe it won't, we shall see. And still, nothing.